you ready for the biggest, most exciting, action-packed animated movie ever on the big screen. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. The Dark Knight fights his most awesome villain, the Phantasm, plus faces every danger the crime-ridden streets of Gotham City can offer up. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm, rated PG. This Christmas, for the first time, America's most exciting and legendary motion picture hero comes to the screen like you've never seen him before. The Bat! In an all-new, larger-than-life feature film. Now, the Dark Knight confronts his newest and most menacing villain. Your angel of death awaits. The Phantasm. I want you. And faces his greatest danger. Be too careful with all those weirdos around. A soaring new adventure. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. The animated movie. Coming for a Christmas you'll never forget. Now, America's most exciting and legendary movie hero comes to the big screen like you've never seen him before and faces his greatest danger, the Phantasm. I want you. Can't be too careful with all those weirdos around. In a soaring new full-length motion picture adventure, Batman, Mask of the Phantasm, rated PG. Starts December 25th, only in theaters. America's most exciting and legendary movie hero comes to the big screen in an all-new, full-length feature film. Now, Batman faces his newest arch-enemy, the Phantasm, as he continues to battle the never-ending pranks of... Can it be? The Joker. <laughs> Batman, Mask of the Phantasm, rated PG, starts December 25th, only in theaters. America's most exciting movie hero battles his newest arch enemy, the Phantasm, in an all-new full-length feature film, Batman, Mask of the Phantasm, rated PG, starts December 25th, only in theaters. Everyone thinks about themselves as having a touch of Batman in them. Batman himself is uh, pretty sexy. He's like the one superhero you could actually be. He's moral, he's tough, he's, he's just cool. Now hold on to your hat and watch those valuables. It's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> Alfred the Butler at your service. On behalf of Master Bruce, welcome to the Batman Mask of the Phantasm film premiere. As you can see, anyone who's anyone is here, except for the master. He can be quite the critic. Having one's secrets illuminated isn't easy for a man who dwells in shadows. Excuse me, sir, they're screening your latest adventure upstairs. Care for a peek? Hmm. Batman! Stay where you are! You have to go after him! I'll have no part of it. A Batman does not kill. He's a loose cannon, Commissioner. Batman's as unstable as the crooks he brings in. Fire! Too close for comfort, sir. You think you know everything about me, don't you? I die at your bottom. I bloody well ought to, sir. Well, you're wrong. Watching his exploits on film has never been easy for the master. And, as you'll soon see, the Mask of the Phantasm may be the greatest challenge yet for Batman and for those who committed this adventure to film. But who would know more about the Batman than the man who told his story first? Superman uh, was the only one that preceded Batman by one year in 1938, and they were looking for another super-duper hero. And so I dug out some early sketches that I did from Leonardo da Vinci's notebook. 
and one was a flying machine, and to me it looked just like a bat. While the Man of Steel was the American dream, the Batman became its dark night. Batman in 1939 was a loner. I wanted him to be a vigilante, basically very dark and gloomy. The Shadow had a gun, so I thought maybe he ought to have a gun. My publisher at that time thought a hero should not kill people, so we got rid of the guns. After that, we relied on his physical prowess, like Doug Fairbanks Sr. as Zorro, and his intellect, like Sherlock Holmes. Through scores more comic books, several live-action adventures, and the graphic novels of the 70s and 80s, this mysterious creature of the night was now a legend, and the legend would culminate with the most dramatic Dark Knight of all, Tim Burton's Batman. But was that the end? Hardly. Another television series? What we have is something that was totally different than anything else that was on television. It was very different than anything that had been done in animation in a long time. It was an animated drama. Along came a team of artists and writers with their own flair for the dramatic, and a revolutionary new animated series was born. Jean McCurdy called us together and said that she liked our approach. Would we do a you know, two-minute piece to show what the series might look like? And we thought, you know, that's, that'll be a blast. The animated series brought back all the Batman's dreaded adversaries. Free. And all his marvelous toys. But it was the innovative artwork that made these shows so special. If you look at the characters, they're very simplified, streamlined kinds of design. Characters are drawn with realistic proportions and cartoony styling. That's really the style that sets it apart, is the, the cartooniness of the characters and the, the darkness of the backgrounds. I, I started with black paper as opposed to white paper. By working on black and keeping buildings limited to lit windows and one light source, it, it created a real sense of scale without really giving you all of the uh, complexity of a, of a huge city like Gotham City. It takes a little bit of getting used to it for the painters because they have to uh, almost paint backwards from what they used to. They're working on a black surface trying to create, create the light on it. All over the industry, it's, it's, it's all I hear is want the backgrounds to look just like Batman. It's quite a compliment. Again, Master Bruce's image burned bright with a story too spectacular for the television screen. Here was a tale that demanded that Batman once again spread his wings, this time on the silver screen. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm, would take the soaring action of the TV series to new heights. Hey, the bat! It would pit the Batman not only against his most deadly foe, but add another adversary more horrifying still. Your angel of death awaits. And finally, it would reveal a never-before-told story from Bruce Wayne's past. He was going to become Gotham City's darkest Avenger, and then suddenly into his life walked this gorgeous, beautiful, intelligent, funny woman who could have been the angel he had been waiting for. Hi. <laughs> what is that? Jiu-Jitsu. Gesundheit. That was a joke. Jiu-Jitsu is no joke. It takes years to master. <laughs> Hey! Whoa. Got a few moves of my own. We wanted to make a big movie story. We were telling the story about the girl who got away, the one woman who could have stopped Bruce from ever becoming Batman. But fate dealt Bruce another hand. I know I made a promise, but I didn't see this coming. I didn't count on being happy. Forget about me. And happiness was never part of the plan. In between the flashbacks, the 10 or 15 year period, we see that Gotham City has not become this glistening utopia of the future. It's become pretty much a cesspool. <laughs> Ridding the city of vermin became his passion. He took a vow of vigilance. Then into Gotham came a creature more threatening than any mere flesh and blood villain. This was the Phantasm. 
Batman is accused of murder. It ain't the bat. Nope, nope, nope. I've seen the guy. And Batman happens to catch a glimpse of this, this new guy in town, which is the Phantasm. And it's a character that looks like the Grim Reaper with this flowing cape and uh, a nasty blade on, on one hand. Alan Burnett described the character to me as, um, as looking like the ghost of Christmas future, you know, basically the, the tall, gaunt, death character. Your angel of death awaits. I went through probably about 20 different versions before I finally hit on something that I, I thought looked decent. Costume's a bit theatrical, but hey, who am I to talk? Then actors were cast to bring the master's exploits to life. We don't force a cartoon uh, approach on them. We just allow them to do their thing. And uh, we've got our Batman, Kevin Conroy. Uh, vocally, there's a lot of difference between uh, the Batman persona and the Bruce Wayne persona, even though it's the same person. It's got to be one or the other. I can't have it both ways. Miss Beaumont would be glad to know you feel that way, Master Bruce. They have to be very, very cleanly distinct. And one is the, the, the mysterious and the darker corners of a man. Mark Hamill is, is the Joker and is great. <laughs> the only thing they showed me was a one drawing. And uh, I thought, he's got so many teeth. He's all teeth. He's all teeth. But it's great, because, you know, I'll do these wild things. I'll look out in the booth and ask Andrea Romano, who's our director, uh, was that over the top? And she's going, come on, for the Joker? Give me a break. I wish that all my movies were animated. Daniel Delaney plays Andrea Beaumont. You don't sit here thinking, oh, I was so fat that day. You know, when you're acting in a movie, you know, you're hot, you're sweating, your co-star has body odor, you know, you don't really like him. All these things are coming into play, but when it's animated, everything's perfect. What do you say? Of course I will. I never thought this would happen. And though I'm loath to sound my own horn, there was one who may do it for me. Now that he's a little prissy, a little sardonic. What the heck am I doing, Alfred? This isn't part of the plan. I must be going nuts. If I may make so bold, Master Bruce, I'd say quite the reverse. Very loyal. Oh, totally loyal and, uh, and very useful, I think, to, to, to Batman. At this point, artists were able to pencil the Batman's every move, shot by shot. Storyboards were, were created amongst four directors and about 10 or 12 storyboard artists. It's great to have you know, a, a cassette of Mark Hamill doing the Joker. Just listening to the way he does the line readings, you, you get a facial expression in your head as to how he's, you know, the look on his face or whatever. None of the directors have any problem visualizing things. None of the board artists or designers either. It's just, it's just second nature. You don't go and say like, what kind of a cartoon, what kind of a, a what would Bob Clampett do? You don't say that. You go and say, well, what would Hitchcock do? Vehicles, characters, dazzling backgrounds, all were animated and edited together to create big screen thrills. Then it was time for the musical score to be composed. Music-wise, I think the most fun part of this is that I get to be a storyteller in the most fantastic way. <clears throat> Animation can just, just take tons. It can take dynamite. It can take... 18-wheel trucks driving right through the story. And that's the most fun part of music, is to be fantastical and, and draw upon every kind of imaginative music source I can think of. Finally, the actors were reassembled where they confronted their cartoon selves for the very first time. She has beautiful eyes. Absolutely gorgeous. I, I wish I looked that good. <laughs> and they're recording their dialogue to the lip sync of the characters. If I don't pay him back within 24 hours, they'll find us and they'll kill us both. Yeah. Excellent. We're going on to 532, please. It's funny because when you uh, do the kisses, you have to make noise. So you got to go. Mm -hmm. Only through the magic of animation could performers a thousand miles apart bring romance to life. How long is this kiss? <laughs> I hope Kevin appreciates that. What I might cringe at myself doing in a regular film, 
I find myself getting a real kick out of doing in, in animation. Ah! What? Ah! Please, ah! Very well done. But it can't get cartoony, but it's got to be broad enough so that only your voice can convey the story. <laughs> Why did the Joker meet with you? I don't know. <laughs> That's not the answer I want. Wouldn't it be great if I'd finally driven him off the deep end? <laughs> Boy, that, that, that makes you woozy. I don't know what it is. We all sit with Mark Stans. <laughs> I guess he has to because his, his performance is so high. It's so, you know, active. Honey, I'm home! At last, the powerful adventure, Batman, Mask of the Phantasm, is ready for its big screen debut. But as always, the Batman himself remains a figure of mystery, a lone crusader in the night. Everything that Batman is, he has learned and worked for. He is the ultimate wish fulfillment in that the common, ordinary, non-superpowered person can take the situation in their own hands and make it better. There's a darkness to him that I think is probably intriguing to most women. It's almost a Hamlet-like quality to the guy. Batman, I love you. And I only wish we had another hundred years together. I can still watch the Adam West shows, and I can still read the Frank Miller Dark Knight comics, and I can watch the movies, you know? It's like they're all different, but they're all Batman. Master Bruce. Back from a night of fighting crime, sir? The Gotham Drive-In, actually. This mask of phantasm is some kind of movie. So I've heard, sir. So I've heard. Hey, Alfred. Can you get grape soda stains out of a cape?